with Junior Mine and Weekly, StockPulse.com production. We track the action of the individual equities markets within the commodity sector. With me to run through the action, Alan Berry of the Alan Berry Reports. Okay, Al, thanks as always. Well, let's run through it here, but I think before we get to the equities markets, let's talk about gold here. Uh, futures price north of 1700 Yellow metal's looking pretty good. The yellow metal is, um, you know, doing what I was hoping it would do. Uh, I've been talking lately uh, about how the similarities between 2009 and uh, after the big uh, debacle of 2008, and um, we're, we're seeing it in spades. Uh, you know, back in 2009, gold was the first asset class to recover. Uh, it recovered well ahead of the uh, stock market. Uh, and uh, it outperformed everything for a few years. I think that's what we're looking at right now, and uh, we're seeing something I don't think I've seen in my career, which is the uh, um, the futures market, the paper market, which every gold bug in the world derides all the time, is actually leading the spot market. Uh, by about 50 bucks an ounce. So, yeah, it's um, there's lots of good signs out there for gold. I mean, you just have to look at your, uh, your financial newspapers and look at the actions of the Federal Reserve, the, the government, and, um, you know, you just come up with a litany of reasons to own gold. So i um, been very bullish on it for a long time, and I think we're going to have a long-term bull market for it. Another thing that I see happening, Rob, is the, uh, we've talked about this in the past shows, is a lack of news um, from the junior sector. I think this even adds more bullish uh, indicators to the, to the, uh, the, the reason to be bullish. Uh, um, you know, there's just not a lot of great exploration going on out there. And even the ones that are doing stuff, uh, I've lamented to you when I look through my news, I see good results, but, you know, oftentimes these companies now have over 200 million shares out. It's like um, nobody cares about share structure anymore. Uh, you know, you, you got to, to see a stock go up really aggressively, you need share structure that's not broken and you need good results. And uh, one without the other isn't a good combination. Okay, let's get to some of those opportunities. First one up here, GFG Resources. Some good results here from the Penn Gold Project west of uh, Timmins, Ontario. Um, yeah, the, it's come to life of late with this uh, news on the uh, drilling results that uh, caught my attention. Um, <clears throat> what I liked about it is they had some uh, nice high-grade material in there, and this was a sleepy little stock under a dime <clears throat> on no volume for a long period of time, Let's see, in the last year. Yeah, they've been basically a flat, uh, a, you know, dead stock and doing not much. And then it came to life right on the announcement of this news um, on big volume. I think they almost traded near 4 million shares one day, Rob. And uh, what, uh, what caught everybody's attention was... 71 grams of gold per ton over 8.5 meters. Now, you know, a lot of juniors, and this came up in the uh, commentary that I heard, almost every junior with a high-grade project, they smear the grade. And I don't really know why they do it. Um, you know, I, I know there's usually gold in the stuff that they smear it into. Oh, here, I'll give you an example. 511 meters of 1.1, or sorry, 1.1 meter of 511, uh, uh, 511 uh, grams of gold. That works out to 71 meters over 8.5, or sorry, 8.5 meters of 71 grams. The problem is, is most of all the gold is held up in the 1.15 meters of 511 grams, and most of the rest of that's not going to get mined. Um, I prefer to see companies just put out the, the data. If it's 1.15 meters of 511 grams, great. If the other seven meters are, you know, anywhere from anomalous to, uh, 
you know, a decent grade, well, put the decent grade part of it out. But companies do this bloody uh, smearing, and uh, I don't know why, but they do. And that was a big topic of, uh, of what was going on during this, uh, uh, when the news went out on this uh, nice hit. Uh, whether you see the smeared grades or the not smeared grades is looking pretty good. Okay, next one up here, Strongbow Exploration reports high-grade copper and tin mineralization in drilling the United Downs Project in Cornwall in the UK. Uh, run through this one, a little intriguing, huh? Yeah, actually, this is an interesting story. They were they partnered up with uh, another company to look, they, the company was looking on their ground for lithium, and they hit, uh, hit um, uh, copper and tin, I believe it was. And when they did, that that part belongs to Strongbow. A hundred percent of that is Strongbow's. These guys are optioning the ground only for the lithium. Um, so this is like an accidental discovery, which you know, oftentimes in the mining sector, could turn out to be really good things. And um, uh, this accidental find. Uh, Drove the stock up on big volume. It was another one here trading at only a few pennies. Traded up to looks like just about nine cents in the, this week. Or and um, yeah, the the grades and the intersections are very interesting. And then you've got this element of a um, you know uh, oops accidental find uh, that always catches people's attention. The the grade the there was high grade copper and uh, tin, uh, the copper number was 14.69 meters of uh, 7.46% copper. That's a very nice hit. Uh, if they keep hitting that kind of stuff, um, you know, I think that uh, that uh, this one could see a much higher valuation. And, you know, these days I'm being real picky about trying to keep on the show those without broken chair structures so strongbow is uh you know covers that territory as well they don't have a broken st stock structure rob so yeah definitely one for pe people to keep an eye on okay abbreviated list last one up here group 10 metals working on the stillwater west project with the uh, gold spot discoveries yeah group 10 is a um, platinum palladium uh story and they were quite a bit higher um, when they um, uh, so when uh, when pl palladium was obviously higher recently and uh, group 10 um, you know I, I kind of picked this one as partially because of the news and partially because I think you should be looking for platinum and palladium stories this one's in the US in a well-known area and, um, you know, so now that it's trading near its 52-week lows, instead of its 52-week highs, uh, it got up to the highs based on the price of palladium. Uh, it was over 30 cents. Now it's trading at um, 14 and a half cents. And the news that they had out that uh, caught my attention was um, they've, uh, they've been doing some desktop studying of their geological model and they've also been using this company that uh, does artificial intelligence uh, with their exploration I kind of hate that term because in reality what they have is a you know an expert system that's utilizing filtering technology to help find targets that really isn't artificial intelligence but you know, Goldspot calls it artificial intelligence. Um, what I did like about it is that they're refining their targeting of where to look for their platinum group elements. And uh, it's also got nickel and copper in Montana there. So, you know, if they can find a, a, a you know, a significant discovery that, uh, you know, looks like it could be a future producer, you've got that angle of it being in... Uh, in the U.S., so you know, with uh, um, all the car building, you know, having a domestic uh, resource of those kind of uh, whether it's copper and 
nickel for um, for your electric vehicles or uh, platinum group elements such as palladium, which uh, you know help clean up the combustion engine uh, um, exhaust. Uh, either way, you got kind of covered there with uh, group ten PGE as a symbol. So yeah, I'm starting to starting to take a closer look at it as a contrary play on uh, pl- palladium. Uh, being oversold and um, and the quality of their project. Thanks for the breakdown on that, Alan Barry, the Alan Barry report. So, Al, before I let you go here, what's going to turn the tide for these guys, these juniors? Uh, gold's obviously in a good spot. It's got some strength. Um, not a lot of good news for good companies. Is it COVID-19? Is that, uh, has that really got people down as soon as they green light these projects? All of a sudden, is that, the, is that we're going to get this energy back in the mining sector? Yeah, a bit of all of the above. I think COVID-19 has got people's attention right now. Um, I, uh, I I think that, uh, you know, the flu doesn't last year round. Uh, I think it's a cycle. And uh, it looks like even in the United States where it was kind of late to the cycle, the cycle is now working its way. We've been very fortunate down in Mexico, it looks like, before there was even a you know the the explosive move in in cases and in deaths. Uh, we're already at the stage in the cycle where it looks like it starts going down from here. So, yeah, you've got COVID nineteen on everybody's brain. Everybody's sitting at home uh, under quarantine. Uh, you know, I, I I think that this is a time when companies should be getting out there and marketing themselves. But of course. Uh, you know, they're all pulling back in their exploration and their marketing, which, you know, is ludicrous to me. I, I think, you you know, right now is uh, with everybody quarantined at home, they should be telling their stories, not, uh, you know, sort of uh, going into turtle position. But, uh, you know, that creates opportunities for some. And I'm trying to, you know, keep my voice strong and loud and because I think we're on to a great market here with the price of gold. Uh, I think it's heading a lot higher. I think we could see 2,000 gold in uh, this year. And uh, I think that will catch a lot of people's attention. And then as the generalist comes into the gold junior mining stocks, they're not going to find a whole lot of companies to uh, of quality without broken share structures. So that's why I'm kind of trying to keep that as the theme of the companies that I bring up here on these shows. Okay, appreciate that rundown there. That's Alan Barry, the Alan Barry Reports. And that's it for this week's show. If you're a fan of the information, please subscribe to the channel, share the broadcast. If you haven't done so, check out the website, stockpulse.com. We'll be back next week with more informative equity news, CEO debriefs you can utilize to enhance your portfolio.